again, I am Blonty, and this is the SEMA X5C-1 uh, upgraded version of a, of a nice cheap quadcopter. It's about 50 bucks worth, actually, and it was sent in by Gearbest um, for me to review. And this was supposed to be the review, except I can't really review it completely or fully uh, because it's, it's gone. I, I haven't been able to finish my testing because it's gone. Those of you who are regulars on my channel will already know I've lost one of these already um, a few weeks back. I posted a video about it. had a, uh, what's, what's in, in quadcopter piloting parlance, it's called a flyaway. And a freak gust of wind took it and blew it out of range and I lost control and it landed in the river. Unrecoverably so. I could not get to it before it sank. So all I could do was watch it pathetically drown in the sea. Uh, so I emailed the guys at Gearbest about it and said, well, this is what happened. Here's the video to show you what happened, actually. So, we, you know, at least we got some video footage out of it, uh, even if I couldn't do a review of it. And, and they offered sending me another one. And I thought, that's awesome of you guys. Thank you. I mean, you know, it's, it's not your fault that I lost, you know, it sank and everything. But they sent me another one because they really wanted me to review because I guess they believe in it. So I, I got the second one uh, about a week and a half ago. And I started testing it, and those of you, again, who are regular viewers will have seen the video I put up yesterday of a bunch of footage I've been using so far as I'm, I'm, as I'm building confidence as a drone pilot, as I'm testing out the camera, and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. I wasn't ready to produce a review yet, but I just was messing around with this footage, and I thought, well, I'll put together a little music video thingy just to, to show it off. So I went out again this morning, intending to do more tests. This time I was going to get some, I was going to try and do some proper sort of cinematic type uh, camera moves and stuff, something a little bit smoother than, than what you saw in yesterday's video, for example, you know, some, some sort of swing bias and, and practice sort of coming around a central pivoting point and, and you know, just the tricky stuff, basically, because my, my confidence as a pilot has grown to a point where I, I believe I had enough control over the thing to be able to, you know, get these, these sweeping, panning, swooping kind of stuff going and sort of really put the camera through its paces. But as you could probably guess by now, it's um, had another flyaway, basically. Uh, it was a very calm morning this morning. Uh, as you can see in the footage, this is, you know, I had complete control over the quadcopter. I'm sort of doing what they call walking the dog, which is basically walking behind it as, you, as you're controlling it and, and, you know, keeping it well under control and keeping it sort of at low ele elevations and controlling it and everything. And I was sweeping through sort of open a uh, 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 little I don't know, Pagola thingy, whatever you want to call that thing. I was, you know, going through the, the open windows of that and, and trying to get some tricky stuff done. And it was, I was having a blast. Um, but then I sort of went up and I tried to get a, a nice high elevation of the city skyline. And um, I, I, I lost control. Uh, well, I didn't lose control. Control was taken from me. Again, it had nothing to do with my ability to control the 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 quadcopter itself because you know I'm, I'm getting better at that i'm no expert yet i'm still a noob but I'm, I'm you know i can make it do what i want to do uh even if i'm a little bit slow i can't sort of do really quick stuff yet but you know whatever but it flew away um and it disappeared into the gray sky i lost track of it i ran after it and i was expecting to find it hopefully on the ground somewhere there was a small uh water feature nearby which i started well away from by the way i wasn't flying it near water you know, it was hundreds of meters away. Um, but yeah, it, it went up high enough so I lost control that sort of it drifted with the breeze or the wind or high altitude, you know, uh, whatever. And it had gone. I could not find where it landed. I suspect it might have made it all the way to the river again. Almost exactly the same spot I lost the first one, as a matter of fact. This time I thought, well, I won't go near the river. I'll stay well away from it, you know. It was not to be so. It drifted far enough to get it. So I can't do a full review of the thing what, what burned me more than losing a second quadcopter was this time I had in it a, a, a very expensive memory card, a SanDisk Extreme Pro uh, micro SD card in the camera because I was having a few issues with the footage I was getting from the camera. I had a couple of instances where it was recording a zero byte file. So, I, you know, I hit record and I was doing the stuff and by the time I got home, plugged the memory card in, there was a couple of files that had zero bytes. They were irrecoverable. They were they were corrupted for whatever reason. So I thought, well, these things come with a very cheap, very cheap and nasty sort of no no branding memory card thing. You know, what do you expect? Fifty dollars for the for the quadcopter and the controller and the camera. You know, they've got to cut corners. This is a cheap toy. So I put in a good memory card, thinking, well, maybe that cheap memory card's just a bit. Psh. 
Um, and maybe it has something to do with me, you know, when I turn the camera off. Do I have to stop the camera manually, then turn the drone off? Or maybe it's corrupting because I'm not stopping the recording before the battery runs out or I'm turning the drone off. And, you know, I was trying to figure out why I was getting corrupted files, basically. So I had a good memory card in there as my first way to, you know, eliminate different problems in, in the chain there. So I was a bit annoyed that uh, I lost that 16 gig SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD card because that, that was more expensive than the drone was. So I'm going to do sort of a, a half review. I'm going to tell you about my experiences with this thing uh, uh, up to the point where I lost it. I, I still had more tests and stuff I wanted to do. I still got, I wanted to do more footage. I wanted to do tests without the, the propeller guards and the, and the landing gear and the camera because you can take all those things off. And apparently, I'm told, when you take all those things off, it becomes a very, very agile, nifty sort of little flyer. And it's much faster and much more uh, sort of tweaky and controllable and you know that's the second way to fly it without all that stuff on it it becomes very sporty i guess would be the best way to put it and i didn't get to try that because i lost it before it uh, happened but so let's 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 break down the review sort of bullet points build quality build quality is actually really good for a 50 dollars piece of equipment and again that's 50 dollars for the quadcopter the controller and the camera and a two gig memory card um, you know everything you need to go right out of the box for 50 bucks for something that flies this stable and, the, and there's this well controlled, it's, it's it's amazing value for money, and the build quality was quite good. I crashed it a few times. The the guards around the propellers are very, uh, you know, they're thin but they're very soft. They're very bendable, so they they sort of take the the brunt of the impact. They absorb it and then spring back into place, and they did wonderfully. I did not damage one propeller at any point, no matter how many times I crashed it. I, I was deliberately sort of uh, hammering it into into tree trunks and stuff to try and break it, you know, as part of the review to try and find out. How much force it takes to actually do some damage to the propeller or the guards or whatever um, but i did that and i've crashed into the ground a few times as i was learning to fly and nothing ever broke nothing was ever damaged nothing even got scratched or marked to, to any extent you know the, the worst thing that ever happened is i got a little bit of grass on it once <laughs> so build quality gets a, a, an absolute thumbs up this is a good uh beginner's quadcopter because of that build quality you can crash it you're not going to be replacing parts all the time. You can experiment, you can play. You don't have to be completely paranoid about smashing up your brand new quadcopter because it is, again, 50 bucks and it's built really well. Um, the controller feels good in hand. It's a significant controller. It's nice and light. Um, it's got a little LCD screen on there to give you some feedback about how the battery level on the controller is going, how, what your trim is and that sort of stuff. There's a lot of fake buttons on it to make it look fancy than it is. Um, but you know it does the trick well. The sticks are nice and comfortable. They, they you know they're not slippy or anything, so you've got good control all of the time. Um, and the the you know the, the resistance of the sticks and everything feels really good. So that uh, that's top marks there as far as I'm concerned. Well, not top marks, but again for the price category, top marks. Um, control as we as we're talking about control is really good. This is an incredibly stable quadcopter. A lot of these really cheap you know, flying quadcopters, you know, the pocket-sized ones and the little mini helicopters. And I've had one of those little mini helicopters before in there. They just, they, they drift and wobble and you can't get them under control and they're crappy basically. This one was really quite stable. It would, uh, it doesn't have GPS or anything, so it doesn't sort of hover in a column. It will drift with the breeze and the wind and depending on how your trim is set up and if the propellers are slightly out of balance, because it's a cheap thing. So, um, but you know, you can get control enough to make it hover in spot. You can sort of get very, very fine, slow control. Um, I had no problems at all with the controller, but it's very responsive, very accurate, um, and very well behaved, uh, usually until you, it flies away on you. Um, so again, top marks there. This is a good quadcopter to learn on because it doesn't have all that fancy stuff. It doesn't have GPS to return to home and, and auto this and auto that and, and you know, plotting your route and all that sort of stuff. You have to learn to fly it the real way. You know, the, the way that, you know, the hobbyists want you to learn with, with full manual control. You have to learn what you're doing. You can't rely on it doing anything for you. So that makes it a really good piece of equipment to learn on if you're planning or hoping to go up to, you know, the, the fancy stuff, the more expensive stuff, the, the trickier stuff. Um, I, I, I've heard, of, you know, picking a drone like this compared to, well, you love to drive a manual car and then even if you can drive whatever you need to drive, you can drive manual or automatic or whatnot. Um, I was thinking along the lines of being a, a photo nerd, learn to shoot in manual. So, you, you know, you get your camera, you put it in manual, and if you learn how to shoot in manual, you can shoot in any of the automatic modes and you know exactly what you're doing, you know how to get yourself out of trouble, you know how to produce certain effects and tricks and stuff because you know 
the end-to-end -end process of it. And that's that's kind of what the learning to fly on one of these things. You learn end-to-end -end process, you learn how to fly, you know, what they call tail in or tail out, you know, depending on which way it's 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 uh, moving towards you and which way it's, it's orientated. You can, you know, because if you push forward on the stick, maybe it'll come towards you instead of away if it's facing towards you now. It's not, it's relative, not absolute control. And you need to learn, you need to get your brain trained on how to deal with that once you get up into the expensive ones so you can do and what you want it to do. You can make the moves you want to make. Um, what else did I have noted down here? Camera quality. Camera quality is not great. What did you expect? It's a $50 unit. Again, $50 unit for the quad cups, the controller and the camera and the memory card. So I wasn't expecting miracles. It looks all right. I mean, it's the same kind of mini quality camera thing you get in in in, in those little spy cams, little keychain cameras and, and pen cameras and stuff you get for, you know, come out of China, it's really cheap. Um, you will get some uh, jello in the shot because the vibration of the unit, because again, cheaper unit, it's not, you know, precisely balanced or anything. So sometimes you get some resonance setting up with, with the spinning propellers and everything. And there's a little bit of jello caused by, the, uh, by this, uh, that vibration interacting with the shutter speed of the camera. Um, you'll also get some propeller shadow effects, uh, like I'm showing you right here. This has nothing to do with, with vibration of the camera itself, this, this effect. This is all about the propellers. Uh, when, you, when you're looking into the sun or looking into a bright uh, point of light, the propellers, as they're spinning, cause a shadow to pass across the lens. And that shadow affects the, um, you know, the exposure, obviously, but it's happening so fast, it's not happening you know, one frame at a time. It's happening sort of a few scan lines at a time. As the sensor scans across the whole image, you're getting a shadow on that part, but not on that part, that part not on that part. Um, and I forget what the term is that uh, you know the the expert quadcopters use quadcopter pilots use to describe that, but that's that's what's happening there. It's got nothing to do with vibration. It's all about the shadow of the propeller uh, coming in from the from the sun, um, and that will happen on on really expensive cameras and really cheap cameras. The only way to get around that is to reposition the camera or try and shade the camera from the sun or everything, uh, and there are ways to do that. Um, but yeah, quality is not brilliant. It's 720p. Well, it, they say it's 720p, but on these kind of cameras, it's kind of 480 resed up-ish because it's not very sharp. The lens isn't particularly brilliant. So, But, you know, the whole point of this is to have fun. This isn't a cinematography tool. This isn't something you're going to be using to shoot, you know, videos and, and movies and productions and stuff like that. This is just having a camera on there because having a camera on there makes it more interesting, more fun. You can, you can start playing. You can start sort of training yourself to try and get those camera movements happening. So when you do move up to a more expensive bit of gear, which you can put... Uh, a, a good camera on it or has a good camera built into it you know you know what you're doing you can get running uh, off the ground much much faster um, so yeah the camera isn't great I didn't expect it to be I was I was completely satisfied with what I expected the camera to be and the camera delivered what I expected it to deliver so I'm going to give it a thumbs up from that even though it's obviously not a fantastic camera it is you know again within the context of its price it is completely satisfactory range this is a 2.4 gigahertz controller range. Theoretically, should be about uh, 250 meters ish. Obviously, it does not have that because I've lost control of it twice now on two different units. Um, and you know, it's tempting to say, "Well, that's just pilot error because you know you, you didn't know how to fly it properly and it flew away and crashed into the river." It wasn't pilot error. I had, I couldn't pilot it. I could see the damn thing. It wasn't responding to my commands. That's not pilot error. That's equipment error. Um, so when it happened the second time earlier today, I thought, well, okay. So the first time wasn't a freak accident after all, maybe, maybe I just, it did lose range and it just psh, drifted away from me. Um, so when I got home a couple of hours ago, I unscrewed the controller. I wanted to look at the antenna. I wanted to say, well, maybe there's a break in the circle. Maybe these things are built cheaply. Maybe there's a, there's a dry solder joint. Maybe there's a break in the, in the antenna. Maybe it's, you know, twisted up in the uh, inside of the unit instead of going through the, the channel for the antenna knob on the top of the thing. You know, I wanted to problem solve. I wanted to find out whether, you know, where the issue was. I wanted to narrow down the field of problems. So I, I unbolted the thing and took a look at the antenna. And what I found was this. This is the antenna, this little bit of wire. And that's not, you know, good or bad. I mean, antennas don't have to be a solid piece of wire. That's just, you know, that's, that's fine. The problem is the size of this piece of wire. This is a 2.4 gigahertz machine. That means the antenna for this should be about four times longer than that, um, or at least half as long as that if you're doing halfway. This is what's called a quarter wave antenna. 
which, uh, you know, it's doing a quarter of the, the wavelength, basically. I'm not going to sort of get in the nitty-gritty and what that means. Basically, it, to narrow it down, if it was a proper full-sized, full-wave antenna, or even a half-wave antenna, the range would be much, much better. And you can pull this apart and, and rewire that antenna if you want to. If you, if you know what you're doing, that's fine. But out-of-the-box experience, for noobs, that's, that's not good enough. Quarter-wave antenna on a, on a thing like this means you can easily, as I've demonstrated twice, you can easily get yourself in trouble by flying right out of range. And if you fly right out of range at the wrong spot at the wrong time, uh, it's gone. So, the long and the short of it is, this is a good bit of equipment. It is robust. It is affordable. It is, you know, uh, it has the full proper manual control. It flies like a proper serious quadcopter should fly. It is very controllable. It's very stable in the air. You know, you can, you can punch it around and it'll level itself off again. It's just not going to go spinning off into, into the dirt. You've got a little button on the top there. You can make it do flips, which is fun. You know, it's all automatic and stuff, but, you know, it's fun to do. The only problem with this is the range. And there's not really much you can do about that aside from opening the thing up and soldering in a longer antenna, which some people have done. I, I did a little research uh, when I found out. I got online and sort of tap it, tap it, tap it. And some, you know, expert type quadcopter people who have had this thing for, for testing and whatnot or just for, for screwing around with or for the kids or something, they've pulled it apart and said, oh, well, that antenna is no good. I'll have to solder my own one in. Not everyone's going to be able to do that, though. So that is, that is a problem. Um, so... I'm not going to say don't buy it because everything else about it is fantastic. This is a, a solid bit of quadcopter gear and unbelievably good value for the price you pay for, for what you get in the end. But my proviso would be if you buy this thing, only fly it on absolutely dead still days. I'm, I'm talking no breeze whatsoever, nothing, not even, not even high up. You know, look at the treetops. If you're moving at all, don't fly it. Because if you do go out of range and you lose control, it's going to drift away on you. Alternatively, uh, find a, a very big open field. I'm talking a big open field stuff. So it does fly away, it's going to land somewhere in the field. I live in Sydney, not far from the city. As a matter of fact, finding huge open spaces is an issue for me because Sydney is a very densely packed city. There aren't that many big open areas where I could go to fly. So I've been doing most of my flying in the botanical gardens where there are several large open areas, but they're not infinitely large and that it is right next to the river in some locations that I was flying. Uh, even though I was well away from the river, you know, three, four hundred metres away from the river at least. Uh, and I thought that was good enough to keep me safe. It wasn't. So if you're going to be flying this huge open space, you know, a field in the middle of the desert somewhere, <laughs> not in your backyard, um, um, you know, not in, in a garden somewhere like I was doing, you know, the sports field at the very minimum, you know, a football field larger. That is the long and the short of it. Thank you for watching. I am Blunty. We'll catch you next time. This is a good bit of equipment, so long as you're you're super aware of where and how you're flying it. Um, and I'm really depressed that I've got two flyaways now, and I've lost a really good memory card that uh, usually belongs to my GoPro, which is upsetting. Anyway, that is that. That's that's all that. I signed off too soon. I had more to ramble about apparently. Thank you for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.